Hey, welcome back and thanks for tuning in. I'm Ian and this is a tutorial edition of Geek Weekly. Well, if you can't tell already, I've dimmed the lights a little bit to make things just a bit spookier around here. October is on its way. And if you're looking to make your apartment or house or party just a little bit creepier, then you've come to the right place. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you three fairly inexpensive and pretty easy ways to age and distress things in preparation for Halloween. Curtains, costumes, old mirrors and pictures. And I'm also gonna show you a special item that'll help you add just that little extra touch of detail around the house. Halloween in my neighborhood is kind of a big deal, and over the last three or four years, I've put my arts background to use, making cemeteries, lighting effects, all sorts of stuff, so that the trick-or-treaters have something to look forward to. Most of the items you'll need for this tutorial are pretty inexpensive to purchase, and a couple of them you might already have in your house. I'm gonna show them to you one by one. Simple craft acrylic paints like Craftsmart brand that I have here can usually be purchased for under a dollar a bottle. I recommend getting a couple varieties of gray, a brown, and if you really suit your fancy, get an umber. Sea sponges are fantastic for texturing with paint. I would invest the five or six bucks to get a pack of them because they're really useful for all sorts of projects all around the house and can be found at hardware stores and art stores. You can get cheap frames like this at any thrift store to put your favorite spooky picture in. I'm gonna show you how to age them. This is a zombie coat I made a couple of years ago and believe it or not, all I needed was a cheese grater and a little bit of fake blood. Yep, you're gonna need a cheese grater. And you wanna know what the kicker is? you're gonna be using the most hated side of it. You know what I'm talking about, that side that you can't get properly cleaned without ending up in the emergency room. I got these simple lace curtains at a thrift store for cheap, and I'm gonna show you how to age and distress these as well. So when you hang them up, you'll keep all the neighborhood kids guessing how many bodies are buried in your basement. You're also gonna need either any variety of black tea or a couple cups of your favorite coffee. So let's get started, shall we? Using the sea sponges to create grime and dust effects on old pictures like these are a great way to spookify your portrait gallery at home. All you're basically going to do is thoroughly wet a sea sponge and then squeeze all the excess water out just so that the sponge is moist. Then you're going to just collect some paint on your sea sponge and very lightly dab it on the surface of the glass. You'll want to put the heaviest marks of paint in the corners of the frame or mirror since naturally that's where dirt would collect the most. It'll only take a few minutes to create the effect that these items have been hanging there neglected for years. For costume items like this zombie jack that I've been showing you, the cheese grater is a great way to give the material that rotten look like it's been falling apart for years. All you want to do is take that spiky side I mentioned and keep running it over areas of the costume that you really want to make look ragged. I've also found that some of the best areas to really make the garment look naturally distressed with the cheese grater are seams and the edges. You can go really light in some areas if you want to create just little snags in the material or you can really go to town on other areas and make them look like they've taken a beating you don't have to smell like a graveyard to look like you came from one if you're planning on dressing up as any kind of corpse or zombie character for Halloween baby powder is a great way to add a little extra detail to your costume so you look just like you've been laying around a little too long Hmm? When you're ready to work on something like the curtains I was talking about, you want to make sure that you age them before you distress them. And that's where the coffee and tea come in. I usually mix about one regular cup of coffee with double that amount of water. You don't need much. What material or item is made out of will determine how much or how little of the coffee stain it soaks in. I find that most materials like these lace curtains just require a quick and thorough dunking in the coffee and water mixture. Definitely hang them out to air dry and do not put them in the dryer. Once they're dry, you can go to town with the cheese grater and make them as beat up as you like. And the best part is, they'll always smell like morning. This is one of my favorite items to use for Halloween decorating time in October. It's a naturally derived clay powder called Fuller's Earth. 
and it's been used in theme parks, movie sets, and even Disneyland's Haunted Mansion. The consistency is pretty fine. It's very much like a face powder, so you're probably gonna wanna get some sort of makeup brush to spread it around. I have one about this size, and you can probably find one at a CVS or a Walgreens. Get one for yourself. All you're pretty much gonna be doing is taking just a little bit of this and sprinkling it around areas you want to look dusty and deserted. You can use it on the surfaces of anything around the house you want to look old, whether it's a vase or a table or even a picture frame. And one of the best parts is it's not harmful or toxic because it's natural. You can find Fuller's Earth online. It's pretty cheap. Don't let anyone talk you into spending a lot on it. You'll probably only need about five ounces. I used to have double this amount and I think it only cost me like six or seven dollars. It goes a long way. So there you have it guys and ghouls. Three fairly inexpensive and easy ways to haunt up whatever size mansion you live in this Halloween season to make it just a little more unlivable. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and there are more on the way. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe. And if there's a tutorial that you would like to see, mention it down below and if I know how to do it, I'll show you. Thanks a lot for watching. Now go get busy and make something, you geek.